our next contestant, Yati. Yatin, despite the odds, despite the gods, <laughs> despite the odds, despite the god, Yatin. Contest chair, dear Toastmasters, and all you earthlings, I am Lord Indra. Yes, you heard it right. I am Lord Indra, the king of the gods. Now, you might be wondering why I am here and why am I dressed like this? Don't I look ridiculous? Four arms, all decked in gold and with a lightning bolt in my hand, they won't even allow me into this bit. <laughs> so when I heard you Toastmasters like to tell tall tales, I had one. So I decided to change it to something believable. And here I am before you. <coughs> How many of you are fans of cricket? A show of hands please. <coughs> well, I am one too. And my story is about cricket. <coughs> Most of you might know about this, but you don't know what conspired about in our land. It was 22nd April 1998, and it was a triangular Coca-Cola Cup. New Zealand, Australia, and our favorites, India. Australia had already qualified, and as usual, it was a do or die situation for India. We had to win against Australia in the last league, or get past New Zealand on net run rate. We were all excited too up there. I had called a few friends. We had booked a room. And with the help from my special effects master, Lord Vishnu, we had enabled ourselves to get all the views of the ground. Not just the boring aerial view. We had also got some devices so we could hear Tony Gregg's commentary. Now, wasn't that wonderful? And that started. Steve Waugh flicked the coin and won the toss. And Australia elected to bat. With help from Michael Bevel's century and Mark Waugh's 80-odd, he scored 284 in the rocket 50 overs. I was starting to get tense. <coughs> India were not very good chasers back then, and I backed on India. And now, my friend Varuna, the lord of the winds, told me, we'll place a bet. He was a die-hard Aussie fan, and me, of course, an India fan. We said, I said, India will win. And he said, no, the Aussie is my might. Aussies. <laughs> the next inning started. Sachin and Saurav at the crease. Saurav got up very early, but Sachin looked in fine nick. As the overs progressed, as the overs progressed, Sachin looked to be in fine touch, and my hopes started working. I thought, I'm going to win this bet. I'm going to win this bet. In 35 overs, India were 145 for four. I thought, a little bit of luck and we we'll <coughs> win there. India will win there. But I saw my friend Varuna quietly sneaked out of the room. I smelled something fishy, but decided to ignore it for a while. And then lo and behold, what happened? The winds are blowing all over on the ground. There's dust and nothing can be seen. The players are all there and they're all walking off the field. The desert storm raged. I wonder what do we do now? India is going to lose if they don't win or don't complete the target and don't get past New Zealand. But then I walked out of the room and confronted Lord Varuna, told him, you cannot do this. This is not fair. <laughs> Australia are meant to win, then they win. But you can't interfere into the matters of the earthlings. Let the match go on as it was supposed to be. He walked out with me sulking though. He came back and saw that the match just started. Sachin Tendulkar was on fire and I could see Greg. Tony Craig going berserk. He was saying, Oh, there's a Sachin Six. Oh, what flamboyance. Is she sailing out of the park? He hit four centuries, three sixes, and India had qualified. He just got out in the nick of time, and India lost the match. But we went on to win the series against Australia, and I lost the bet against Lord Warren. But nevertheless, out of sheer joy of my team winning, I threw a party for all my friends. The Asuras joined in as well. Lord Varuna was there, but he was sulking because Aussies had lost the series. So, the moral of the story is, despite the odds and despite the gods, if you have will and determination, you can snatch success from the jaws of defeat. <laughs>